and I'm going to record it as well. Awesome. So, hi everybody. Thank you so much for um, yeah for tuning in and uh, spending some time with myself and Leslie and, and her team to talk a bit more about G Adventures and about you know why we travel, why G Adventures is you know so excited to be able to show people the world. And I'll talk a little bit about G for Good, how we believe just by going on vacation, you can have a positive impact. I'll speak a little bit about the how. So what is adventure travel? What does it look like to be on a trip with G Adventures? Talk about small groups, uh, talk about our travel with confidence policy, and then we'll talk about the where. So the, those tours within the Travel with Confidence Plus collection, um, highlighting just three of those 40 trips, which would be Burgundy, Iceland, and Costa Rica. And of course, we'll have time for questions at the end as well. And so straight off the bat, um, hi, I'm Gary. So I'm the G Adventures Global Purpose Specialist for Alberta, as well as Eastern and Northern Ontario. I lived in Alberta for uh, 12 years, for the last 12 years, and just moved to Ontario in December of last year. Um, my role is to work really closely with our travel agent partners. So travel agencies, your local travel agent, um, so that yeah, they can get information and we can put on great events like this to help educate at them and their, their clients, their travelers, all about what it is that G Adventures does. I've been working with G for about the last, yeah, four years. So I wanted to start by addressing the elephant in the room, which is the COVID-19 pandemic and its impacts on global travel. So absolutely, every single travel company is impacted by this. Uh, border restrictions are still in place. I mean, even right home here in Canada, there is a still week, two week quarantine for those people looking to come to Canada or who are able to and those people who are returning. And so, um, you know, I feel and I think a lot of us feel that we have the tools uh, to mitigate risk to, you know, um, yeah, to, to, to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but still enable people to go and travel and see the world. Um, learn about the unique cultures and the histories of the people in different destinations. And I'll talk a little bit about community tourism, but also, you know, travel and tourism is a um, major economic driver for both developed and developing nations. And so uh, it is important for people all over the world to be able to welcome travelers into their country and show them the wonders that they have um, so that, uh, yeah, we can all learn more, but we can also ensure that, um, you know, people, countries' economies can, can thrive. So I'll talk a little bit about how we're working to mitigate risk on our trips. Um, but first, I want to speak to that why. So why travel with G Adventures? Why we are still so passionate about beginning to operate safely, globally, as soon as we're able to? Um, because we, you know, yeah, believe that people should have that chance to go and see the world. And it started with this guy. His name's Bruce. He did grow up in Calgary. He founded G Adventures uh, in 1990. We are a Canadian company. We're headquartered in Toronto. And uh, the big part of our why is the, the principles on which Bruce founded this company on, which was that travel and tourism can save the world. That travel is a fantastic mechanism for wealth redistribution. The industry takes some of the wealthiest people in the wealthiest countries in the world to visit some of the poorest people in the poorest countries in the world. Um, and so why, why can't more of the money that you invest in travel, why can't that stay in local economies and lead to positive outcomes for the people in those destinations, both for developed nations and developing nations? And there's a lot of ways that we do that at G Adventures. We call it G for good. It's all the things that we do in the background that ensure that just by booking a trip, going to that place you've always dreamed of visiting, seeing that, those, those animals, that wildlife, whatever it happens to be, um, just by going to that place, you are having a positive impact and we're mitigating um, any of the unintended negative potential consequences of, of operating that trip. So uh, the ripple score is a big part of this. You'll see when I talk about Burgundy and Costa Rica and, and Iceland, um, the ripple scores of those trips and it's on the vast majority of our trips and it shows how much of the money that you're spending with us is staying in that local destination. So how much of in-trip costs are staying um, in that local economy? And it was created by a third party company. We didn't do this. We had a company come in, audit our entire supply chain and tell us where that money is going so that we can then communicate that to our travelers to show you, you know, how you're having that positive economic impact. We have our responsible travel policies as well as uh, the Planetara Foundation. Uh, the responsible travel policies include our animal welfare policy. So no way of interacting with wildlife anywhere in the world on any G trip that could in any way negatively impact those animals' lives. 
Uh, no tiger temples, no uh, shark baiting and diving, no dolphin experiences on NEG adventures trips. Uh, we also have a uh, policy around the way that we work with indigenous, rural and remote communities and, and peoples around the world. So ensuring that those communities can uh, share their stories in their way, um, aren't being overwhelmed by the number of travelers that are coming. And uh, historically, we've seen a lot of people talk about overtourism and the impact on Venice and uh, you know, Amsterdam and, and these different um, cities and towns. But uh, you know, mass tourism can also be you know, 30, 40, 50 people every day arriving in a village that has 30, 40, or 50 people into it, in it. So our goal is to always ensure that those communities are able to um, yeah, share their cultures, with those visiting travelers and make sure that we're not having any unintended impacts on those communities uh, by learning from them about their way of life. We also have our child welfare policy. So G Adventures was the first uh, international travel company to be certified as child safe by the child safe movement. No way of uh, interacting with youth, especially at risk youth on any G Adventures trip uh, that could potentially lead to unintended negative consequences for those kids. Uh, for more information on this and all of our different travel policies, uh, speak to your um, travel lady, uh, local yeah, travel agent, because you know, they're going to be able to, to, to provide more information on this. And if you have more questions, I'm, I'm here as well uh, to help you um, learn more about those policies and how they impact our trips. Planetera, the Planetera Foundation is the nonprofit part of our business, also founded by Bruce in uh, 2001, and it was uh, Terra is actually Bruce's daughter's name. So Planetera is the mechanism through which we are proactive in building relationships with local communities, individuals, uh, other nonprofits to ensure that those local places can build uh, businesses that tap into the tourist economy. So we provide uh, seed funding grants as well as uh, experience and education to those organizations and people so that they can. Uh, create businesses that allow them to see the benefits of travel and tourism. We have over 85 projects that we funded around the world, lots of information on planetera.org. Uh, and of course, speak to your, your travel agent as well for more info on Planetera. Ask me questions too, because I'm a Planetera ambassador at G, so I have a, a relatively good understanding of the different projects around the world. Always happy to talk more about uh, how by going to a destination and, and visiting one of these Planetera projects, you can really see firsthand the positive impact that you're having on that community simply by going. And they have been extremely impacted by the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So we're lucky in Canada, we have a government that is able to uh, provide stopgap funding and, and, um, uh, and grants to people who are out of work. Many parts of the world that is not available to people who live, especially in remote and rural communities. And so we are providing ongoing assistance to those um, certain projects uh, as we're able to and as the needs arrive, uh, arise during, during this crisis as well. But ultimately, you know, that's why we do what we do at G. Um, we are and have become the world's largest community-based adventure travel company in the world. Uh, so we're not the little company that could anymore. We take you know, tens of thousands of people on hundreds of different trips all over the world. And um, it just goes to show that doing the right thing and doing the profitable thing these aren't mutually exclusive ideals. You can have a for-profit company with a non-profit wing that works with communities to the benefit of everybody who's uh, partaking in that journey. Um, and it, it, it really does allow people to have culturally immersive experiences and get to know the people in that place and to have that positive impact um, while also having a great vacation and relaxing and enjoying your trip and um, learning about the, the peoples in, in, in those places. So that's uh, why we travel at G. Um, you know, I get a lot of questions about you know, what does it actually look like to be on a G Adventures trip as well. And so we do small groups. We've always done small groups at G Adventures. We will continue to do small group trips. So the vast majority of our tours, they max at 16, average 10 or 12 people. So you're not just another person on a bus or another person on a boat. You're, you're part of a very small group of people. Traveling with your local guide, your CEO, who is from that destination, um, you're not waiting for 15 minutes for everybody to get off of the uh, vehicle when you arrive in the destination. You're not filling up a restaurant or filling up a um, cultural site or a temple when you get there. 
and you're able to you know move through that destination and and see it just in a little bit more of a um yeah an unobtrusive way and so there are lots of benefits to to being part of a small group of course i'll talk about uh, the um the new travel with confidence plus collection and uh, just the inherent less risk that we have because we're running smaller groups. And then we do have a broad appeal to travelers of all different age ranges as well. So the way I break down this beautiful pie chart is that about a third of our travelers are millennials, uh, 18 to 30 somethings, two thirds of our travelers are not. Uh, and so, you know, it makes sense. We have a lot of multi-generational families traveling with us, a lot of solo travelers. Um, and so we also have a split of about 64% women to um, 46% men as well. So a lot of solo female travelers travel with us too, but just a, a broad appeal to different demographics. Um, and I, I think that's partly because of this aspect of adventure travel. And so, you know, for a lot of people, you know, when you think of adventure travel, you may think of having to do a lot of sweating or a lot of hiking or carrying heavy things or having a backpack on your back. And that's really um, not what adventure means to us at G Adventures. The adventure is that cultural immersion. It's pushing your comfort zone, just the tiny bit. And being part of a small group helps everybody to just, um, yeah, get that little bit out of your comfort zone because you're all in the same boat together. And, um, you know, the adventure can be trying that food and maybe trying that food from a street vendor uh, that food that you've always enjoyed in Canada in a sit-down restaurant, but being able to go and, and have the confidence and speak to your CEO and find a great place to have that, that experience in destination with that food that you've always loved. And then when you come back, um, remember those experiences um, and, and the, maybe the differences from food in destination to, to somewhere else. It's um, you know, that opportunity to get off the beaten path, to have those spontaneous experiences when you're in a destination and not to be you know uh too over planned it's not on the bus off the bus on the bus off the bus the idea is to have a little bit more freedom so that we can allow space for those um unique experiences to happen and, and for us that's the adventure is that you know you never know what's going to happen um but it's about embracing that and um yeah and and, and learning while we travel and so the way we, we frame this as a company, uh, because of the broad appeal that we have and the different types of traveler who chooses to travel with us, we don't break our trips down by destination. We do it by style of travel. So the psychographics of the trip. Who are you as a traveler? How do you like to see the world? What style of travel is going to fit um, with the type of person who you are? And so uh, across the travel with a Confidence Plus collection, you know, uh, all the different travel styles pretty much are included in that collection. Um, you know, we have 18 to 30 something trips, trips that are uh, assisted backpacking, it's on a shoestring budget, it's sometimes uh, hostel versus hotel for those 18 to 30 somethings. It's the only really age limited uh, travel style that we have where you do need to be between the ages of 18 and, and 40 to travel. Uh, and it's designed from top to bottom with that psychographic, that persona of person in mind who's going to enjoy those trips. Most of what I'll be speaking to today are our classic trips. So um, trips that are hotel, not hostel, um, trips that have a few more inclusions, um, a little bit more structure, but also have a balance between uh, you know, guided activities versus free time to go and explore yourself. I could go through the list on National Geographic Journeys trips. Uh, these are you know, um, upgraded accommodation, a little bit more comfortable, more educational content, access to Nat Geo experts in the field as well. Our active trips, the clue is in the title, multi-day hiking, biking, kayaking trips. I'll talk a little bit about marine because we're going to talk about our burgundy barge today and uh, what river cruising or uh, river adventures look like with G. Our wellness trips, our local living, the list goes on. Um, but that's just really kind of a quick introduction to, you know, why we travel at G, the transformative power of travel, both for the individual and for the people in the destination. You know, what it looks like to be on a G trip, who's going to be traveling with you, um, and, and you know, what a small group journey looks like. And I want to talk a little bit about the changes in travel as well. But before I get to that, I'm going to have a quick pause. If there's any questions, if you want to unmute yourself, um, then just please go ahead and if you've got any questions about the, the why or the how so far. Okay, I'm taking a pause.
amazing. If we don't have any questions, uh, remember there's the chat box. You can type in questions into the chat box as well um, and, and let me know from there. And we, of course, there's going to be time at the end as well uh, if, if you want to ask any questions uh, once we get to the end. So there are some changes in the travel industry um, and there's things that we are doing at Gene Ventures to make sure that we are mitigating risk for our travelers so that we're able to operate safely in destinations. For us as an organization, it's, uh, there's, there's two sides to this. Absolutely maintaining the health and safety of our travelers, but also we need to ensure with the remote rural destinations that we're often traveling to, um, that we're ensuring the safety of the people in that destination as well, especially if healthcare um, isn't as accessible as it is in, in many other parts of the world. So, um, you know, yes, this elephant in the room, the COVID-19 pandemic that's impacted all of our lives, and really, it's just common sense solutions that we've been putting in place that as a Canadian, you will already be very much familiar with. Ideas around uh, social distancing, physical distancing, um, the, the wearing of masks, you know, these are the, the, the tools that we have you know, that to make sure that we're able to operate safely and, and keep people in destinations safe as well. Uh, because of the uncertainty in, you know, with borders being open and then borders not being open, we have relaxed our terms and conditions as well. So that when you put down your lifetime deposit with G Adventures, um, if it's for a trip between now and the end of this year, you have up to 14 days prior to make changes. If it's a trip you're booking for next year into 2021, you have up to 30 days prior to um, cancel and rebook your trip if you know, the situation changes um, and if things aren't continuing in the, the positive trajectory that we, that we all hope that they do. So we wanna make sure that we do have a little bit more flexi flexibility in our terms so that you're able to book with confidence and know that your um, investment is protected and that you're going to be able to make those changes if, um, yeah, if, if the situation um, doesn't continue to improve. And travel with confidence is all the physical things that we are doing on the ground to make sure that we're able to mitigate risk and operate safely. So things we're doing before you arrive, um, when you arrive, while we're on the trip and before you leave to ensure that uh, at every stage of the process that you are um, yeah, going to be able to travel safely in any destination around the world. And part of the way that we're doing this is, you know, we're lucky in that we already, already operate small groups. So there is inherently less risk in being a group of eight, 10, 12 people to a larger group. Um, and it's a little bit easier to build in, you know, physical distancing um, when you're on that size of group. Um, and you know, it, the, you know the, the CEO is going to be able to have um, yeah, more control and more of an impact on that small group as well. So we're extremely lucky. We're not having to really uh, make drastic changes to the way that we operate as a business or the logistics that we operate because we've always had this style of travel um, that, that um, sets us up for success when it comes to operating um, during the, the new normal of COVID-19. We do have the option for solo travelers to book their own room as well, so that if you're uh, traveling by yourself, then um, you're not being roomed with somebody else. There is an additional cost to that with our Travel with Confidence Plus collection, which all of the three trips I'll talk about in a second uh, all are part. Um, we're reducing the cost for my own room as well, so it's 50% uh, less for those trips, um, so that you're able to, to have that, that space at, at a lower cost. Our CEOs have always been the the, the, the drivers of our, our, uh, our brand and they make the trips. Uh, I've had, I could talk a lot about some of the amazing CEOs, uh, chief experience officers, our, our guides that I've had through our trips. They are empowered to uh, make changes and decision on, decisions on the ground to ensure the health and safety of our travelers. And so, um, you know, you have an arrival meeting when you arrive in the destination and there's always been that uh, setting of expectations, talking about cultural norms in that place. Um, and you know, get, introducing yourselves to the group. And so the CEO is gonna be able to very clearly uh, ensure that everybody understands the local regulations uh, around mitigating risk for, for COVID-19 and be empowered to make decisions that ensure the health and safety of the group while you're there. We also operate a lot of our own vehicles. So transportation is something we have control over. We're able to, um, and we have implemented, you know, uh, increased cleaning reg regiments, um, you know, assigned seating in vehicles, making sure that people have that physical distance space when they're traveling from point A to point B. And, you know, we're able to control and make changes um, as, we, as we operate. The same with our small ships. I'll talk about the, the river barge. 
um, inherently less risk on a small vessel of eight, 12, um, you know, 22 passengers than a much larger vessel. And again, the opportunity to work with our partners on the ground to make sure that they are implementing those um, cleaning regiments and uh, best practices that mitigate risk and uh, enhance health and safety for everybody on board. And it's the same with accommodation. Again, we're super lucky. We've always worked with smaller hotels. I mean, the idea is to work with that local business owner who has that smaller um, boutique style property that's more in keeping with the local environment. And so, you know, the vast majorities of the properties that we use, there's not a big main elevator that everybody's having to go up. You're, you know, walking into your rooms. Um, and so it, it just means because of the way that we operated, because of the way that who we are as a company, um, we're able to also mitigate risk by working with these smaller uh, hotel suppliers so that there's, there's, there's less risk because there's physically just less people um, in those properties. And then the key as well is making sure that everybody is well fed when they're traveling. You know, again, something that we don't um, uh, have to, to make huge changes around because we never over prescribe the number of meals that were included in our trips. The goal is always to give people that opportunity to go explore the local um, culture to go to local restaurants. And so with this, you know, we're working with our CEOs and suppliers on the ground to make sure we are recommending places where if we are eating as a group, we can book a, a, a private room so that people can eat, um, you know, together as a, as a, uh, a group on the G trip. And of course, uh, being able to eat outside uh, wherever possible, um, maybe trying some of the really great street food where we know from group after group after group going and traveling and visiting and eating, that you're uh, gonna be eating healthy, uh, safe food from that street vendor as well. And so really this is just another opportunity for us to ensure that travelers are benefiting the local economy and also, um, you know, also being able to, to, to eat safely uh, while they're on the trips. And for breakfasts, breakfasts are always included on the vast majority of our trips. And uh, what we're doing with most of our uh, suppliers is creating relationships with local restaurants so that you have a, a breakfast in a box, right? A go box. So you can grab your, your, your breakfast uh, and take it with you. And so again, ensuring that we're not um, having to, to eat in, 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 um, in one place potentially with, with, with lots of other people. So that's, you know, a really high level overview of all of the things that we're doing as far as ensuring that you can travel with confidence with G Adventures, that we can operate safely as an organization in destinations all over the world. Um, and it leads into this travel with confidence plus collection, which is where we've selected about 40 trips that we're able to take all of those ideas, those methods, those best practices, and we're able to just take them to the next level. And so on all of those 40 plus itineraries that are part of this collection, we will max the group at 12 instead of 16, except the Burgundy Barge, which was 22, it's now at 18. Uh, we have private vehicles throughout. So with any of these destinations, as I'm talking about any of the trips and any of the trips in this collection, uh, you'll have private vehicles that are um, you know, run by G Adventures or a local supplier who we've worked with to ensure that we're able to um, make sure we have those, those, uh, those cleaning routines. So no, um, yeah, no public transit on any of these itineraries. The My Own Room I mentioned on this collection is 50% uh, off. And then with all of these trips, we're also ensuring that the accommodation that you're using has uh, personal washroom facilities is built onto every single um, room that you're using. So with some of our uh, itineraries in, in Africa, if you're camping, or some of our itineraries uh, for the 18 to 30 somethings collection, you know, sometimes there would be shared washroom facilities. That's not the case on any of these travel with confidence plus collection trips. Amazing. So a good introduction there to kind of the the why, the how, and a little bit more of a deeper introduction into the things that we are doing and the changes we are making and the policies we are putting in place to ensure that we can safely operate uh, during um, COVID-19. And now I get the opportunity to talk about a few of the beautiful destinations and some of the itineraries um, for the places just to kind of spark that idea, that imagination of, of where you can go and travel. I mean, just within this Travel with Confidence Plus collection, we have 40 different itineraries and destinations all over the world. I'll touch on uh, another collection we have, Book Your Bubble, at the end of this where we have over 80 different itineraries. So, you know, the world is still out there. Um, people all over the world are looking forward to welcoming you to their backyards and showing you their way of life and 
the culture and the history that they have and doing so in a way that is going to ensure the safety of everybody, you as a traveler, but also them as the people living in that, that destination as well. Amazing. So I can have another quick pause. Uh, if there are any questions about uh, the travel with confidence uh, policy or the, the, the plus collection before I talk about Burgundy, Iceland and Costa Rica. Um, Gary, it's Leslie here, just um, chipping in here. Uh, a lot of questions I get from people right now is about insurance. Um, obviously with COVID, that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you are interested in any of these trips, just chat to our girls. We have sourced out a couple of travel insurance companies that cover COVID, so um, you can travel with ease on that, as far as that is concerned. Of course, until the travel advisory is changed by the Canadian government, you're still gonna to have to do the 14 days quarantine. And with many people working remotely from home or possibly retired, that's maybe not such a big deal, but we are expecting some news about the changing up of the travel advisory to be more country specific, which would be great news because Europe particularly has done a wonderful job in controlling COVID. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, yeah, and, and I say that also speaks to um, Canadians, right? The fact that, you know, once, because the, the problem that some other destinations of countries have had is that they're happy to take that approach of allowing travelers to go abroad, but there aren't necessarily a lot of destinations that are willing to accept those travelers. In Canada, again, you know, we're all used to these things. We're all used to social distancing and physical distancing. We're used to, to wearing masks when we're unable to do that. Um, and so that's, you know, greatly benefited us in the fact that we've been able to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 within our, our own country, which gives us that opportunity to um, be a, a trusted traveler, to go to another destination and, um, you know, and follow those same guidelines in a responsible way and, and make sure that we, you know, we can continue to, um, you know, enjoy the world and see the world in a, in a safe way. Uh, that's amazing news on insurance as well. Uh, for G Adventures, you have to have um, medical insurance or uh, insurance to be able to travel with us, um, you know, including emergency evacuation, uh, but it doesn't necessarily need to include, uh, it's recommended that it includes coverage for COVID-19, but it, it's not mandatory. Um, but I, I think, as we see more availability for insurance for Canadian travelers, especially if we're moving away from a blanket um, travel advisory, I think that's gonna definitely help with, um, yeah, allowing people to go and visit some, some different destinations because the, the, the news that we constantly see is all those countries who are um, not necessarily being able to mitigate the transmission effectively, but there are many, many, many destinations, jurisdictions and countries that have uh, done an absolutely fantastic job uh, of, of preventing the spread of COVID-19 and, and mitigating risk. So um, definitely there are countries out there that um, are safe to travel to and, and we're lucky, you know, in Canada, um, we're, we're a safe country to travel from as well. Um, yes, thank you for that. So uh, Europe is a place, I mean, close to my heart. I grew up in the UK um, and I was really excited to, to, to have had the opportunity to uh, travel on this river boat, but unfortunately my trip was planned for May of this year and so I didn't have the opportunity. However, I've spoken about this vessel uh, on a number of occasions to my colleagues who have had the chance to go. Um, it's a beautiful little ship, so it's the Danielle. She's uh, traditionally 22 passengers. We've reduced that to 18 um, to make sure there is a little bit more space. You can see there's a jacuzzi on the front. There's also dining space outside and you have that large top deck as well where we're able to um, ensure that people are able to, uh, to eat. Uh, distanced as well and then uh, all the food is prepared on board and it's the only G Adventures trip where all of your uh, wine with meals and, and beer and such is all included in the trip as well so um, you're in Burgundy you're in France uh, you know you, you're going to have the chance to enjoy a lot of different um, hand-picked wine pairings with the amazing food that is served on board um, my colleague who went on this trip is a real foodie and uh, he just had it, you know, hashtag pate all day and, and was, was raving about the chef's choices uh, as far as cuisine and also, of course, the wine pairings to go along with it. So this is an eight day itinerary. So opportunity to, um, you know, explore the region, uh, build more around this trip and then slow down and relax and enjoy a, a six day 
um, river adventure uh, along the, the, the canals of Burgundy. And so, you know, traveling and visiting all of the beautiful little towns as you go through, chance to get off the vessel and enjoy the destination. A couple different uh, bike rides included in this as well. So um, if you want to rent an electric bike, you also have that opportunity too. And there is a support vehicle running with you as you uh, do this, this biking. But Burgundy is extremely flat. And uh, what you do is, is with these days where you're doing the cycling is you get off the vessel, you know, you meet, uh, everybody gets their own bike. And then you, you know, bike through the beautiful vineyards of the region, stop, have lunch, potentially have a wine tasting, and then continue to cycle. So you know the cycling isn't too difficult if uh, there's the opportunity to uh, taste various different types of wine in the middle. Um, as I mentioned, a maximum of 18 travelers, and just you know, an idea to, to be able to take you there and, and see what it looks like to travel through this destination. I mean, when I say biking through the beautiful vineyards of the region, this is what that looks like. Um, you know, the chance to just explore at your own pace and, and, and through the region with your CEO guiding the way. Absolutely stopping to try some fantastic wine in the region, to learn about the terroir, to learn about the process, um, to, you know, from the experts in that place while you're going and, and, and biking through those vineyards and exploring, as well as the chance to, to just slow down and watch the world go by in some of these really beautiful, picturesque little villages in this region. Um, you know, to, to get off the vessel and, and in your free time, you know, walk and, and, and pop into these little places, um, you know, perhaps stopping at an outside cafe and, uh, you know, grabbing a pan au chocolat and a cup of tea and, and, and watching the world go by. Um, you know, the chance to visit the chateaus, to go into their magnificent grounds, to learn about the history from your local CEO, um, who will be able to, you know, instead of, you know, walking with your face in a guidebook or having to constantly be on your phone Googling and, and, and seeing what you're seeing, to just ask those questions of your local CEO and to um, be immersed in that destination as, as you explore. And um, throughout, you've got your floating hotel, uh, your river barge, um, that's you know slowly progressing its way through um, you know the the beautiful canals that that intercross and wind through this region, and so it's an eight day journey. You know you arrive in Dijon, you travel through, and then at the end um, uh, transferring back by private vehicle to Dijon, or if you're traveling in the northern direction, um, then finishing in Dijon as well. So a beautiful little tour. Um, I think I've highlighted yeah the wine, the food, the um, amazing. Uh, yeah, the countryside and the history of the place. Uh, if you have any questions about it, then yeah, let, let me know at the end as well. Now I get to, to talk a little bit about Iceland. So um, again, I, I mean, it's hard to pick a country that I don't enjoy talking about, but Iceland is, is really unique. It's a, it's a beautiful destination um, with this itinerary. Uh, again, it's a plus collection trip. So maximum of 12 people on this trip. My own room is, um, uh, is going to be 50% off. And you do a full circumnavigation of the, of the island. So not just staying in Reykjavik and seeing the Golden Circle, but, but traveling and, and seeing much more of the island. Um, and there's, it's interesting because, again, there's no bad time to go to Iceland. This is a beautiful chart that I pulled off the internet that shows the temperature. I mean, sure, during the summer months, it's not going to be as hot as it is in Canada right now. But during the winter months, it's not going to be anywhere near as cold either. Uh, during the summer, you get that um, almost 24 hours of sunlight to go and explore and, and uh, you know, enjoy your time. So even if it's a little cooler, it's going to be, um, uh, yeah, much more daylight. And then in the winter, you know, with those short days, you still have a wonderful opportunity to see the northern lights as well because you are so uh, high up. And it's going to potentially be a little bit warmer than, than back home as well. Um, so no bad time to go. Our accommodation uh, throughout this trip is a standard level of accommodation. Um, so it's going to be, um, uh, yeah, local hotels, and then there is one um, kind of, uh, yeah, homestay that's there as well. And the great thing about our accommodation in the region is for the vast majority of these places, they have either a hot spring close by or jacuzzis for you to enjoy. So if you are there in the winter, um, the chance to find a good place to be outside, to then look for those northern lights when you're in the destination. And so as you can see from the map, you start in Reykjavik. You head up to Akiuri, uh, travel to um, uh, Lake Mertlev, and this is the difficult thing with Iceland is getting the pronunciations right. You travel all the way through, and while I go through these pictures, I wanted to quote my colleague who was on this trip, uh, and his words still resonate with me, and this was from the fall of 2016. 
Um, and what Justin had to say about his time in Iceland he visited um, back in, in November of, of 2016 was that uh, the landscapes are nothing short of amazing. Volcanoes, waterfalls, geysers, hot springs, mountains, icebergs, the natural beauty of the island is really tough to put into words and the terrain seems to change around every corner. There's so much going on and it's all packed onto this, on this island, shaped and reshaped by an eternity of volcanic activity, nestled high in the North Atlantic Ocean, Iceland truly is one of a kind. And so I just you know, love this idea of um, the actual geology of the place, the thing that has shaped this island over time is uh, one of the main draws to go and see it, just the outstanding landscape and vistas and having you know, spent a, a long time in Alberta and um, you know, time in the mountains of both of BC and Alberta and coming out to Ontario and seeing the, the forests and the lakes here, I mean, it is the landscape of a destination that, that can help to shape its people and its culture. And so to be able to travel through that region and to have so much variation packed into such a small space um, really is why Iceland continues to be one of the most popular destinations um, for travelers from all over the world to go and visit. So, you know, you've got your winter coats already, you've got your layers because you already live in a place with, um, you know, varying temperatures. And, uh, the, you know, Iceland is a, a beautiful place to go and see and, and experience, um, you know, some, some really beautiful different uh, landscapes. And again, the culture there is so different. Uh, I, I have to go so that I can learn how to pronounce a lot of these names from the people who are there. Because often once you've been to a place, that's where you really get to um, nail down the, uh, the pronunciations. There's also uh, a lot of optional activities to do at the end of your trip. So this is a, a relatively um, short itinerary. And so the chance, if you want to build on a couple extra days um, to see the uh, partition of the two tectonic plates at the Sulfur Fisher uh, and, and go snorkeling there, um, to go uh, cave diving and to, to go to the Blue Lagoon and enjoy the hot springs or do a, a hot springs hike tour that we have as well. Lots of optional extras you can build on at the end as well. And then finally, Costa Rica. So Costa Rica is very close to home. Uh, again, a destination that's uh, basically yeah, it's the most popular itinerary. This Costa Rica quest is uh, one of the most popular itineraries that G-Adventures has as an organization. Um, the chance to travel to somewhere that is warm when it is cold here, um, to, yeah, to, to experience all that the, um, the country has as far as the landscapes, to soak in the hot springs, uh, to relax on the beaches, to learn about the fauna and flora of the place. So to travel to Ariel National Park, um, to learn about the volcanic processes that have created um, the, the, the jungle on the slopes uh, of those, um, those volcanoes, to uh, you know, enjoy the, the hot warming muds of Ariel National Park, to soak in the hot springs that accompany those volcanoes, um, but also to spend time in Monteverde, to travel through the cloud forests, to learn about the flora and fauna in that place, to see the baby sloths, um, learn about the, um, the conservation that's going on uh, for, for turtles as well as for sloths and, and, and uh, um, to help to, to, to preserve the, the jungles in the region as well. Um, yeah, to, to understand more about, uh, you know, the wildlife in this incredibly biodiverse part of the world uh, and also to relax on the beach, to take some time, potentially try a surfing lesson or do some stand up paddle boarding um, and to soak in the sun on the beach at the end of your journey as well um, through this, this diamond shape that we, that we travel through as you go through Costa Rica. So um, again, it's a short journey, an eight day journey. I've got the ripple score there. Apologize for not speaking to the Ripple scores. Uh, they were 100 uh, and 99 for the other two destinations that I'd spoken to. And um, this idea that you know you're going there, you're having a fantastic vacation, you're seeing the sites, you're learning about the people, the history, the culture, you're benefiting the local economy, and um, but all in all, you're you're just having a really great relaxing vacation while you're there as well. Um, so that's just three of the des different destinations that you can travel to with G-Adventures. I wanted to quickly touch on the Book Your Bubble collection as well. So this is uh, 80 different trips, a few of the Travel with Confidence Plus collection trips are in here as well. If you have your own bubble, if there's a group of eight people uh, together that want to go and have your own private uh, trip to any of these destinations, um, get in touch with 
uh, Leslie with our team so that they can talk to you a little bit more about the options available to you. I feel like we all have our bubbles, right? We all have the, that group of people uh, who we are able to have more social contact with because we understand that we're all part of our own bubble and we're helping to mitigate risk. And so the idea is that if you want to go and see the world with that group of people, um, we, can, we can make that happen for you um, through these 80 different trips across our travel styles and, and across destinations all over the world. Um, if there's promotions available, then you're able to see those promotions uh, as part of your private group, which wasn't available before. Um, and the eighth person will get 50% off the trip, or you know, we can spread that to the rest of the group. The 12th person can travel for free if you've, if you've got a large group, or if you're the person who has to do the hard work uh, convincing the rest of your family um, you know, that this is the destination that you want to go and see at this time. So. Uh, absolutely. Um, speak to uh, Leslie and her team for more information about all things travel with confidence, G Adventures, and, and book your bubble. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for um, taking the time to to learn and listen to me. I can't overemphasize enough the value and benefit of speaking to a local travel professional. Um, you've heard me talk a lot about G Adventures wanting to support local businesses, and that starts at home. There is no difference in cost booking with your um, local travel professional as booking with G Adventures Direct. And um, they are, you know, uh, on the forefront of understanding um, the solutions to the questions that are being posed by COVID when it comes to insurance, when it comes to visas and border restrictions. Um, this is what they do. Um, I don't cut my own hair. I don't do my own taxes. I don't book my own travel. There are professionals who are able to do this and, and make it uh, a much smoother process. And I know all about G Adventures, they know all about G Adventures, but if you're looking to build things in before your trip, after your trip, if you're looking at a number of different uh, suppliers, different types of ways of seeing a destination, you, you, you really can't do better than talking to your, uh, a local travel um, advisor because they're going to be able to get the best trip for you. Um, so thank you guys so much again for um, spending your, uh, your lunch, your afternoon, learning a little bit more about the, the why, the how, the what, and the where of G Adventures. I do really appreciate it. Uh, and if you have any questions, then um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm happy to answer them as well. Uh, so I have a question uh, for you, Gary. Uh, when we're talking about the benefit of using a professional and you said you don't cut your own hair, what about during COVID? Did you cut your hair? <laughs> no, so I actually, it's, I, I'm hesitant to use that because I haven't had a haircut since February, which is why it looks like this. <laughs> um, so I am going to have to get it cut because I'm getting married soon and I want it to look better for the photos. Um, yeah. But equally, I, I think I'm going to grow it out so that, you know, um, the goal would be to grow it out and then uh, not have had it properly cut. Um, since the start of this and that way um, maybe do a planetary fundraiser of some kind um, so that people can go back to seeing me the way that I usually was instead of you know having all this hair um, so we'll, 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 we'll see if that comes to fruition or if I just have to you know stop constantly pushing it out of my face all the time fun fun times we had a few not so much questions but um, just some comments about um, the Burgundy Barge trip has been um, on Sarah's wish list for quite a while. Uh, Marisa is saying that she's been dreaming of travel for the future, and I think many of us feel that way. <laughs> My goodness me, I am suffering severely from withdrawal symptoms. I would really love to get traveling again, but I really like the idea of um, the smaller groups with G. I think that that makes it very manageable, and. Um, I think for those who do want to travel, uh, you know, there was a big fuss about Air Canada putting the on hold message, telling people, you know, they can travel to the States. Well, as I saw it, they were putting that message on because they probably had so many questions. And we as travel agents have had a number of questions from the public, not necessarily who booked with us, but questions about maybe bookings they've made. So um, I think it goes back to what you've said, um, Gary, about using a travel professional. Uh, you're quite right. It doesn't cost any more um, than booking direct. And then you have a dedicated agent at your disposal, very often someone who's been on that actual trip who can help you out in that regard. So during these uncertain times, it's always nice to have somebody holding your hand 
And we will do that for you, but we can't do it right now during COVID because we're not allowed to touch or hug. And that's, that's a real challenge because I'm a hugger. I have to watch myself. So if you ever come to our offices, stay away from me. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? No? Sarah, you fine? You good? Everybody? Excellent. There's one from Darlene about being late logging in and whether this was recorded. Yes. Yeah. yes. Gary has recorded this. And Gary, we do have a few people as well who registered, but for whatever reason, uh, didn't manage to log on. And we will send out a, a copy of this recording, I would imagine. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll send it to you as soon as I, I log off. And then um, hopefully it's not too big a file size to fit in an email, but there's, there's lots of ways around that. Yeah, we can do Dropbox or something else like that to get that going. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody has any other questions, of course, you're very uh, welcome to contact us directly. Um, it's, you've got our website information, you've got our contact information from the confirmation email that went out to you all. Uh, we'd love to answer your questions and help you realize these dreams. Um, I think, Gary, uh, you did a fabulous um, presentation. I love the fact that you touched on the ethical side. Yes, the ethical side of travel because it is becoming a problem. I remember when I went to India and uh, the one lady had bought um, small change in her bag and she was starting to dish it out to the kids because you always have a million kids rushing around you. And our guide, who was the local Indian person, really told her off. She said, do not do that. She said, you are handing out money to children and it's encouraging them not to go to school. So mom sends them off to school and instead of that, they run away to the town because they know the tour buses are there and they can get money for nothing and it just destroys their, their futures, really. So we it's do have to be... Right? I mean, we don't know what we don't know. And so by making sure that we're being proactive in... Um, yeah, and introducing these concepts and ideas and, and empowering our CEOs to have those conversations, you know, just like yes. that, that guy that you had did, right, to actually be confident to have that discussion with the traveler and not worry about the potential that they may then be upset and, you know, um, you know, yeah, uh, just kind of put up their displeasure to, um, to people higher up. It's like, no, the idea is that we, we you know, we don't know what we don't know and, and education is, um, yeah, is, right. is power. Exactly. And we can sometimes be so indiscreet in our joy at a new destination that we go around with our iPhones and taking pictures here and there. And Amanda, I think it was you after you'd been to 1G Adventures training and you said how true that is. Can you imagine if you were taking Lucas to school one morning and there was a stranger in your pathway and he's now taking a picture of your son? I mean, that would be appalling. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, historically, it's been uh, talking about the child welfare policy has been the what the, the policy that I get the most questions about. Um, but the easiest way to describe it is, I mean, yeah, what what would that look like if it was here, right? So, um, yeah. if point once you imagine it being the same, so and kids are the same everywhere, right? They they really are. So um, the idea is to just see it from the perspective of that same activity was happening, yeah, in your hometown. How would that make you feel? Very true, very true. Well, that was just a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much to those of you who switched on your videos so we could see you. To the other ones who are a little more shy, maybe we'll see you in our offices one day. <laughs> but it was a wonderful presentation. We will get this recording out to everyone who registered for this. And um, everyone, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Gary. That was fabulous. Really enjoyed it. Cool. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye, all.